is y'all your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 most dangerous spots in WWE Raw history. Raw has had some epic, legendary moments and spots that you just be like, yo, how the hell they pulled this out without someone actually legitimately getting sent to the hospital? That's just in wrestling in general. The, the stuff that they do is incredible. Of course they tried to make sure that the wrestlers are safe as possible with crash mats and stuff like that but at the end of the day it's it's still something that is completely shocking when you see it so we're gonna check this out i'm pretty sure there's gonna be a clip of jeff hardy in one of these moments uh the one moment i can think of is when he climbed to one of the top of the raw sets and jumped off oh just ridiculous just ridiculous man and i'm hoping jeff is doing well and uh wishing him a speedy recovery for whatever he's dealing with so he can come back to the ring man but let's get right into this appreciate all the love and support row 270k and let's do this thing man almost unrecognizable to some in its current state the show burst onto the scene with a blaze of crass attitude and more than its fair share of over-the-top personalities yet the one thing that many lament in this pg era is the outstanding levels of violence they packed mm -hmm. into these shows now for good reason this has been curbed but once upon a time raw was definitely termed the red brand for good reason because it was full of fucking blood yet yep. which were the real moments that made us jump from our seats and yell holy sh so loudly that our neighbors called the police well let's take a look to Together, shall we? With this in mind, I'm Jules WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most dangerous WWE Raw spots in history. Number 10, the New Age Outlaws push a dumpster. Yeah, that's actually dangerous, bro. He's in a actual dumpster, bro. That's actually dangerous because there's there's no cushion in there, bro. You just you just gotta hope and pray. Oh, man. Full of people off a stage. So, Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie are going at it in a hardcore rules match, hitting all of their usual mm -hmm. insane spots, as is their want to do. Then Jack tosses Charlie into a dumpster, climbs up to the staging area, and delivers a diving elbow drop. That's all fine and good, because we all know there's a big old pad at the bottom of yeah. the thing, probably enough packing peanuts to ship an entire room of your house to another fucking country. But there's simply not enough insulation in that very real dumpster to completely break the fall when the two are trapped inside and pushed off a ledge mm -hmm. by the New Age Outlaws, dropping a good six or seven feet to the concrete below. It was an incredibly well executed piece of television with pretty much every wrestler and crew member coming out from backstage to sell the legitimacy of the injuries of Mick Foley and Terry Funk. Of course, it was JR's famous commentary that put it over the edge. Oh my God, don't you dare do that. There's people in there. JR knows how to sell a moment. And I remember watching that. I was like, yo, even I was like, are they okay, bro? Because... You know what I'm saying? It, that, that's that's a high drop to fall in a <laughs> confined space. Even with, you know, foam and stuff still there, it's still, still kind of dangerous. Number nine, Van Terminator to Kane with Ooh. a chair. TLC4 was the first installment of the crowd-pleasing match gimmick to appear on an episode of Raw, and it featured four teams instead of the usual three. This was mental when oh you consider gosh. how set to injury these match types yep. are and the fact that there was now a fourth team in the mix but it did give us this moment oh rvd was off the leash and made the most of every oh, second this is as he ascended the top spot. rope and flung himself from one ring post to another the crowd erupted it's a moment destined oh. to wear out mouse buttons as you repeatedly watch kane get decimated i tell you what though i bet kane was glad to be wearing a mask so we couldn't see him cry because me, oh my that looks that spot Number eight, was Shane legit. McMahon crossbody Crazy. off the top of the cage. Now this one deserves some extra points for being delivered by an outright amateur. Shane McMahon had only participated in a couple of WWE mm -hmm. matches at the time of his interference in this cage match between Test and some members of the Mean Street Posse. Complete with dress slacks and a buttoned up shirt, Shane O'Mac climbs to the top of the cage and, without even taking a second to pause and consider the ramifications of what he's about to do, flings off said cage and onto the members of the posse who are waiting for him down below. Although it doesn't really reach the heights of Superfly Jimmy Snooker perfection, Shane performs the move admirably. Cause yeah, Shane always will be a legend and a GOAT when it comes to wrestling because he was not afraid to do anything. And he's not even a traditional wrestler. He's out there with these guys risking his life to entertain us. Crazy, bro. Crazy.
causing everyone in the crowd and probably at home to wonder where the hell this guy came from. A fact that he hasn't let us forget even today as he tries to find more things to jump off in search of his father's love. Number seven, Jeff Hardy swat on yep. bombs off the top. This is what I was talking about at the beginning clip. I remember watching this and just... Ah, this was just ridiculous. Titantron. The Swanton Bomb is a lovely move. Whipping his head back at the very last minute, Jeff Hardy has always pulled off this signature with style. Yet, mm -hmm. as beautiful as this move can be, it can always be bettered. And Jeff has launched himself off of ladders and cells and uh, bigger ladders in his time. The best, though, was definitely when he threw caution to the wind and flung himself yep. off of the Titantron back in 2008. About 35 feet in the Ooh. air onto Randy Orton below. And he nailed it. The spot looks so dangerous and so visually striking that it deserves to live on in infamy yep. for all of time. Classic. Number six, Bubba Ray power bombs a granny. This spot right here will forever and always be mega rogue. <laughs> For reasons that were never adequately explained, there was a very long phase during the initial run with the WWE that saw Bubba Ray and Devon Dudley get off and power bombing women through tables. Yep. It was weirdly Weird. perverted and sadistic, and I loved it. Yep. It only got weirder, though, when the Dudleys set their sight on the older crowd. Mae Young was in mm -hmm. her late 70s when the company oh decided to let Bubba Ray power bomb her through a table twice. twice. The first time oh. the table was set up in the ring and performed off the top turnbuckle, but the second time is the one oh. that we're focusing on because he jumped off the ledge of the entrance and power bombed her through some tables that were below and it was fucking amazing we've not seen the i legitimately just i i didn't even have any words i'm like bro did he just power bomb someone in her 70s a woman at that off the stage through some tables i love this shit <laughs> elderly abused in such a manner since but then again could you ever top this no number five edge spears jeff hardy off of the ladder mm -hmm. the night immediately following their legendary tag team cage match at unforgiven the hardy boys and edge and christian were tasked with trying to recreate some of that magic on an episode of raw that's a damn near impossible feat considering yeah. the toll unforgiven took on their bodies but the raw match still managed to pull out some absolute gems with jeff hardy dangling from the chain that held the tag team championship belts edge ascended to the top of a ladder and spears his positively Ooh. soon to be corpse right into the mat oh a solid 15 feet below there seems to be no way to take this move properly without some form of pain so mm -hmm. massive props to jeff and edge for surrendering their bodies up for a free tv crowd Number four, Shawn Michaels super kicks Shelton Benjamin's head off. Aside from this being one of the greatest matches to occur at the tail end of Michaels' career, his match with Shelton Benjamin provided what is unquestionable. One of the coolest timing finishes to a match I have ever seen. The timing on this has to be perfect the greatest super kick the heartbreak kid ever executed mm -hmm. by the time that hbk fought benjamin in 2005 he performed the sweet chin music like i don't know eight million times yet even a guy who spent three decades perfecting a side kick to the face has to find it difficult not to knock somebody's head clean off when that person is launching themselves across the ring into said kick this was so speed. good benjamin springboards off the top rope arms flailing shooting directly into sean's extended boot how do you pull off that kick and if you're benjamin how do you hope to get your hands in front of your face in time it yeah. was a move that rivals any rko yep. for the holy hell where yep. did that come from it was such a surprising spot that it will always be remembered as one of the best super kicks ever delivered by anybody because it was just the timing on that was so perfect factor Number three, Sabu's triple jump leg drop on John Cena. Mm -hmm. ECW's own Houdini of hardcore had a pretty short run in the WWE, but luckily he gave us this insane spot before yep. he left. Bathing in the glow of his success at ECW's one night stand, Sabu looked keen to keep the momentum going against John Cena by showing off his classic devil may care attitude. With a folding chair magically yep. appearing in the classic ring set spot. up and ready, Sabu takes a run at it, jumping off the chair and onto the top rope where he balances very precariously for a long old second before launching himself through the air and onto Cena's body <laughs> with a gigantic leg drop. 
The amount of hang time Sabu gets oh my, is ridiculous, oh as is the fact that the WWE lets him try this considering his horrible track record of botching these kinds of moves. Of course, the move did result in a huge shiner for Cena, which mm -hmm. can't have endeared the hardcore icon to Vince McMahon. Still looked fucking great though. That Number two, Ken Shamrock spot. takes an unprotected chair shot to the skull. Woo. Taking a shot to the face with a chair is more science than art. It's a simple matter of timing, really, mm -hmm. to make sure you get your hands up in front of your cranium before the chair comes down to crush away all of your living memories. Yep. Apparently, no one gave Ken Shamrock that memo though, because the dude decided to take the brunt of that thing with his damn face. And at the time, The Rock, who was giving said chair shot, wasn't exactly shy when he was wielding mm -mm. one of those bad boys either. Between this spot and the unmitigated yeah. Yeah. that was his chair shot marathon against mankind at the Royal Rumble 1999, it's incredible that The Rock was even allowed to sit on a chair again while performing on WWE TV. And number one, Kurt Angle's moonsault. Them chair shots, man. They, uh, whew. It's, it's, back then, it was all about making sure you laid in. You didn't hold back. You didn't, you made it look as real as possible. So you legitimately used all your strength to hit them with the chair. And if you didn't protect yourself in enough time, you was just probably going to get a concussion. That's just what it was back then. Granted, they don't do the head chair shots as much anymore, obviously, for, you know, concussion reasons and protecting the wrestlers, which I, I'm all for. But at the end of the day, man, bro, that's just what it was. Wrestling was wild, a much wilder time back in the day off the top of the cage. First of all, it needs to be said that this cage match between Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit was a damn clinic on weaving technical wrestling mm -hmm. with dramatic storytelling. <clears throat> and now the WWE is slowly putting Benoit matches back on the archives, you two can wow. witness the death-defying... I didn't know they were starting to put his matches back on the archives. Did not know that. moment. Up until this point, Kurt had never really shown his distaste for gravity so greatly, so him performing the moonsault mm -hmm. was a shock. But also check out the obscene amount of hang time. That's Ooh. the exact opposite of what most Daredevil Man. types try to do when they come down to the top of the cage. And, and this just... wasn't the only crazy move from the top of the cage, as this match also features an incredibly mm -hmm. dangerous diving headbutt from Benoit, which had all sorts of hazards attached to it. But ultimately, Angle's moonsault took the crown that night because we'd never seen anything attempted by him that yep. high risk before. Definitely, man. I, that definitely took the spot. Only because he crashed and burned, and that was ridiculous man but comment down below let me know what's your most dangerous spot from this video that you you know that you enjoyed the most man uh for me i'm gonna have to give it to the jeff hardy one i just i remember that so vividly bro because the dude was literally climbing to the damn near to the rafters hit the swanton bomb i thought it it, it it just looks so brutal. That was one of my favorite dangerous spots from this video. Appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.